What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to synthesize and design our own 808s. That is not use samples, but actually create them from scratch using Logic stock synthesizer plugins. So let's take a closer look at the 808 we're gonna be making in this video. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna mute and hide all these tracks. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to track, new track, software instrument, and make sure empty channel strip is selected. I'm gonna go ahead and name this 808. Now on the left here, we're gonna select instrument, and this is where we're gonna select the synthesizer plugin that we wanna use. Logic has a few different options here. You can use ES1, Synthesizer 1, ES2, but actually for this video, we're going to be using one of Logic's new plugins, which is Sampler. Now, normally this is used to sample things and assign them to a keyboard, but believe it or not, there's a built-in basic synthesizer in the Sampler plugin that we can use to create an 808. So this is the layout of the Sampler plugin. Up at the top are different sections we can show and hide by clicking these little buttons. Normally, if you were using this as a sampler, you would go into mapping and you would place your auto files here onto the keyboard, but we're not going to be doing that, so we're going to leave mapping and zone hidden. Um, so we have synth, mod matrix, and modulators. And I'll talk about which, what each of these sections does in a minute. But first, let's clean up what we don't need. So let's start off by clicking the, clicking the first row in the mod matrix. Um, oops. Um, and then click the minus here, and let's delete all of these items. I'm just going to keep clicking these out. Next, we'll go on to modulators. I'll click the LFO1 box, delete that. ENV2 box, delete that. And then ENV1, envelope 1, we can't delete because that is the fundamental block of our synthesizer. Um, so let's start with that. Envelope 1 controls the amplitude profile um, and what an envelope is, is a sh uh, essentially a profile that runs every time a, a note is played. And so this is critical for the 808. This controls how the volume or amplitude of the signal is shaped over a duration of time each for each note. And Logic gives a few different options here for envelopes. And each of these has just a different number of parameters that you can change. So we're going to keep it on the default, which is ADSR. Now ADSR has four parameters, and these stand for attack, decay, sustain, and release. Um, and I will demonstrate what each of these does and how we can use them to shape the sound of our 808 in just a second. First, let's talk about this slider on the right here. This is a velocity slider, and by default, you have 30 decibels um, of dynamic range of volume, which means depending on if I'm using a MIDI controller, how light or hard I press the key, it's going to allow 30 decibels of amplitude between those notes. Now, typically 808s will just be at one amplitude, one volume. Sometimes they'll be at different volumes, but for simplicity for this video, we're just going to have the 808 always play at the max volume. So I'm going to drag the slider down to zero, which means there's gonna be no dynamic range, no matter how light or hard, I press a key on my controller, or no matter what the velocity is when I'm recording, it's gonna be at the max volume. So let's get into what each of these four parameters does, um, starting with attack. So currently, as it's set up right here, when I press a note, which let me get this going, go up an octave here so we can hear it a little bit better. When I press a note, it instantaneously jumps to the maximum amplitude. And if we wanted to ramp that in, we could adjust this parameter. So now it's set to 281 milliseconds, so it's going to ramp in to that maximum amplitude. That's what the attack parameter does. Next is de decay and sustain, and they kind of work together. Decay is how long it takes to reach the sustain amplitude. So if I move the sustain amplitude to zero, which is going to be the note is off, 
if I leave the decay at zero milliseconds, once we ramp up the attack, it's going to instantaneously jump down to the sustain amplitude. I can move this note up. And it's going to sustain an amplitude for as long as the key is, well, sustained or held down. So if you look at the keyboard here, as long as the key is held, it's going to, it's going to use the sustain amplitude. Now we can change the decay parameter to ramp into that sustain. Next is the release parameter, and this is what happens after the note is released. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to move these back to default. Whoops. Yeah, you can actually change the curve. Um, we're going to leave that at linear, so zero. Okay, so we're going to set all these default except release. So by default, release is zero, which means as soon as I let go of the note, or as soon as the note ends, it's going to instantaneously drop off. I could move this up and it'll decay over time. So if we think about what characteristic um, an 808 has, what amplitude envelope we want, there's obviously different types of 808s, um, but a lot of modern 808s kind of just start, they have a decay, they, they have a long release at the, end, at the end of it. They don't instantaneously drop off, and this just kind of makes it sound smoother and more legato. So we're going to add a release. Um, I'm going to do about 871 milliseconds. Um, you could obviously make this to taste. Um, and so what this is going to sound like is something like this. I'll go down. Now, currently as it's set up, the sustain is at 100, which means if I'm holding the note, it's going to be at full volume until I release it. Now you could want this, you could, you could want this by design, uh, but, but in this case, for consistency, I want every note to immediately start decaying. Um, so I'm gonna set the sustain to zero, and I'm gonna match the decay to the release parameter. And what this means is that, essentially, as soon as the note starts, it's gonna, it's gonna begin decaying, whether or not the note is held down or released. If the release was zero and there was decay, um, it would only decay if the note was held like this, but if I released it, it would stop. So we need to have both of these um, so that way it will always decay 871 milliseconds no matter how long the note is pressed. So that's the uh, amplitude envelope that I'm going to be using for this 808. The next thing we want to do is actually look at this pitch. So a characteristic of basically all 808s is that they bend into the final pitch. They don't start at the, at the final pitch. They actually start at a higher pitch and bend into it. Um, and this is something that you don't really think about when you hear it because it's usually pretty subtle. But this is a, a common characteristic of almost all 808s. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add a modulator target and then a modulator to, to control that target using this mod matrix and modulator. So in this mod matrix section, I'm going to click the plus to add a row here. The target is what we're going to be changing. And so we want to change the pitch. So I'm going to click this drop down, and I'm going to select pitch. The source is how we're going to be changing that pitch. You have different options here. Um, common modulators are LFOs or envelopes. Again, envelopes trigger a profile every time a note is played. So they're triggered when the note is played. LFOs are just, infin are just uh, infinite oscillators, infinite functions that have no relation to when the note is pressed. So we want the pitch to change every time a note is pressed. So I'm gonna create a new envelope. And the amount is how much we want the pitch to change. So this has a maximum of 1200 cents, which is 12 semitones, which is one octave and you could also go down. Now what you notice is at the pitch here, Logic actually displays this nice little curved section which you can use to visualize the pitch bending. We'll see that in a minute. But first let's look at this envelope. So to demonstrate what this sounds like, I'm just going to up the release. Um, let's go 188 and also the decay, 188. And this is what it sounds like. 
This is bending one octave. And you could notice, you can observe up here that Logic shows us a little nice visual for that pitch bend. Now we want a subtle effect on this. So I'm actually gonna bring this all the way down to, we'll go 100 cents. So that's one semitone. So if I'm, if I'm playing an F, it's gonna start at F sharp and it's gonna bend down into F over this envelope profile, which is 188 milliseconds. So let's try that out. Again, it's subtle, but it's important. All 808s have this pitch bend. So if you could change this value to taste if you want a more dramatic effect, you can increase that. You could change the timing of it. You can do whatever you want. You can even have it bend up and down. You can do all sorts of things. But this is a pretty standard and conservative pitch modulation. The next thing um, we should do, we'll mess around with this filter, but first let's go into details in our synth. There's really one main thing we need to change here, and that is the mode. So by default, we have poly, which means multiple notes or voices can be played at once. And by default, you have 16 voices, which means I can play 16 notes on the keyboard all at once. Um, so if I play a triad, you can hear three notes are played. Um, now, in the low register where our 808s are going to be, you really don't want multiple notes overlapping because it just gets really muddy. Um, there's too much going on. It doesn't sound good. So we want to change this mode to, to mono, and mono only allows one note to be played at once, which means if I'm playing a note and I jump to another note while that note would still be playing, it cuts off the first note and immediately jumps to the second note. So that's what we want for our 808. So let's go ahead and close that details, um, and let's go into filter here. Filter gives us a few options. Um, you have cutoff, resonance, and drive, which is actually a little distortion element to the filter that not all filters have. Cutoff just determines um, how much, how, how many frequencies, what frequency band is allowed. We don't really need to cut off any of the high frequencies, but if you wanted to cut off the high frequency, you could reduce that. We're going to leave that 100%. Resonance, we're also not going to worry about. We're going to leave that at zero. But drive is what's going to add a lot of color to our 808. It's a little bit of a distortion. And Logic provides um, a few different filtering options. And to be honest, I don't know what the difference between these really are, between lush, fat, lush, creamy, sharp. They're just slightly different filter profiles. But we can fiddle with this drive knob to change the color of our 808. So I'll demonstrate that here. So it just adds some grit to the 808. Some, it adds some harmonics to it. So I'm going to put this around 30%. But to make it more interesting, to make our 808 a little more um, interesting and unique, we can modulate this parameter similar to what we did to, for pitch. So I'm going to go into the mod matrix, I'm going to click plus to add a second row, and um, now our target, I'm going to select filter one drive. That's what we're going to be modulating. The source is I'm going to use a new envelope, something that plays every time I press a note. And for the amounts, I'm going to set it to, I don't know, about 25. You could set this to taste, but you can see now Logic added this orange um, bar to show how much we are modulating the drive parameter. Now I'm going to match actually envelope 2, um, so that way when the pitch bends, the drive also bends at the same rate. Um, so I'm going to set this to 188 and 188. Now, I could have just selected envelope 2 up here, so it would use this envelope for both the pitch and the drive. It would have the same effect, but I'm going to leave it on envelope 3 in case I want to change just the, the, the drive envelope and not the pitch envelope. I'm going to allow me, myself to have the flexibility to do that. So now we can hear what this sounds like. So that's all that really does is it bends um, the distortion drive 
in over time, over the duration of the note. And that's really the, that's pretty much it for the 808. Um, now you could throw some other plugins on top of that, like some additional distortion if you wanted to grid it up even more. You could mess with the EQ. Um, but really, the main part of it just comes from this synth, um, which is the synthesizer that's included in the sampler plugin is essentially just a sine wave. If you wanted to get more complex, you could use ES2, the ES2 synthesizer plugin, and that allows you to change the waveform from sine to square or triangle. But really, I mean, all an 808 really is is just it, the fundamental part of it is just a sine wave. So this synthesizer in the sampler works pretty well for basic 808s. Now, one thing that's almost always done is a kick is layered on top of the 808. So like right now we have this 808 and it just doesn't have a lot of punch at the start of the note. The bass is there, but at the start of the note there's not really a punch, there's not a kick. So almost always what's done is you create another track, which is just a kick track, and you layer that on top of the 808, either all of the 808 notes or only some of the 808 notes if you only want some of them to pop with that kick. If you don't have a kick sample you'd like to use, you can use one of the built-in kicks from one of Logic's drum machines. So I'm going to go to New Software Instrument Track, I'm going to open up the library, Electronic Drum Kit, 808 Flex should have one, but you could use any of these drum kits. Yeah, so right there that's a kick that we can use. And then you could change the sound of that kick using um, really any plugins you like. You can mess with the EQ, maybe reduce some of the low frequencies, and maybe boost some other mid frequencies to leave room for that 808 bass. Another way to leave room for that 808 is you can add a compressor to that kick. Um, and also what I like to do is add some distortion plugins to the kick to really give it some grit, some color, and really add that punch to the start of the note. Hope you guys liked the video. If you do, leave a thumbs up. Um, and subscribe and let me know if there's any other tutorials you guys want to see. Cheers!